Right, okay, guys. So I've been rough for the last week or so. Been really ill. Don't know if it's flu or COVID. If it's COVID, it wasn't showing up on a test, but pretty lousy. But something dropped into my lap just recently, which really cheered me up. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. So I'm going to link the person who did this down below in the description so you can check it out for yourself. But this is going to be basically be my reaction to this trailer. So as we know, Ahsoka's not been a great show, right? It really hasn't. But someone's just made it a little bit more funny, and that's because they've done a trailer. They've clipped bits out and made it like an 80s-style trailer. And, I mean, they've done a really good job, and it's really funny too. <laughs> so we're going to take a look at it together. Like I say, I'll link it down below. If you get a chance, go over, give it a watch, give it a like as well, because it's it's very well done, let's, let's just say. So anyway, without further ado, let's get on and have a look, shall we? Right, okay, so let's just add that in here now. Now, we will have to pause it every now and again, because uh, just in case anything on here is copyrighted. Right, here we go. Ahsoka Tano, mystical Jedi warrior, <laughs> trained to be a child soldier by the master of evil. <laughs> mystical Jedi warrior. Okay. Uh. She must learn to walk her own path while maintaining order in the galaxy. <laughs> oh my god, the music. Oh wow. Oh man. The music, the music, honestly, is great. It's really good. I mean, he's like typical 80s. We've got to go back a little bit here because I just noticed something else as well. Now, that's got to be sped up because there's no way at any point in that show that Rosario Dawson runs that quickly. Like, in fact, nothing she does in that show is that quick. Just so I know. Ahsoka, a Jedi who fights against the forces of darkness, right. using her twin lightsaber. I mean, what is this underhanded grip? I mean, I, I used to do martial arts, as you guys well know, and a part of that martial art was uh, screamers. Now, I know for a fact, if you've got a backhanded grip and you're going in and someone's against you with another one, you've actually got a disadvantage because you've got a weakness at that point. So I don't understand it. Like I don't know what the choreographers are thinking with this. And incredible, never-before-seen abilities. Water breathing. <laughs> oh, never-before-seen abilities. Water breathing. Oh my god. <laughs> Whale song. Whale song. And quick change. Quick, quick change. <laughs> oh, that's because in one of the episodes, if you haven't watched it, sorry, spoilers, but if you've not watched it, she, she literally goes from the cockpit being in normal clothes to in a spacesuit within seconds, and she's out on top of the shot the ship. Oh man. Joined by a ragtag band of friends, they journey into the unknown. <laughs> they literally got the worst shots of them as well. Oh, my God. Sabine, Mandalorian warrior, explosives expert, and hopeless Jedi, hopeless street Jedi. artist. Street artist. <laughs> hopeless Jedi and street artist. Oh, I mean, you know, you're calling out one of the problems right there. She, she was never meant to be a Jedi. I mean, what is this now? Everyone can be a Jedi. Is that what this is now? <laughs> Street artist. Hera, a pilot with the heart of a pilot who is always dressed to pilot. <laughs> <laughs> a pilot with the heart of a pilot who's always dressed to pilot. Oh, my God. Yes, now I should address that. So basically, if you don't know, these characters were taken from Star Wars Rebels, which was an animation, right? So obviously in animations, your characters look a certain way and in most cases stay that way throughout. Problem is when you then put them to live action, you really should give them other outfits because she's not piloting all the time, is she? I mean, it works in an animation, but it doesn't work in the show. And as you can see, like she walks around with these goggles and these funny like, I don't know what you'd call them. They look like headphones. And she's got them on virtually all of the time. I think mean, there's only one scene in the entire show where she's not wearing her pilot outfit. So, so yeah, when they're saying she's a pilot 
who looks like a pilot and always is ready to pilot. I mean, they're absolutely right. That's basically how she's portrayed in this show. This is really funny. This is good. And Hu Yang, Ahsoka's faithful servant, a 25,000-year-old robot that possesses more knowledge and experience than any other living being in the entire galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, basically, it's true. That's exactly what they did with him. Uh, I mean, when you look at this show, he's probably the more knowledgeable of them. And actually, he's portrayed by a really good actor. I, um, and it notices, it really does notice, because other than Balin's skull, he's probably the only other intriguing part of this show. Uh, yeah, and he's restricted to fixing the ship but more often than not. You know, he's trained how many Jedis, but he's fixing ships. Well, there you go. Says it all. You know, says it all. With the threat of a new Star War looming over them, <laughs> they wrestle against the intangible... Oh, with the threat of a new Star War. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that people at, at Lucasfilm now, they probably do refer to it as that. Well, it's another Star War that we're doing. Like, you idiots. <laughs> He's so no less how they talk there. Uh, Lars Mikkelsen. Uh, yeah, the pear-shaped Thrawn who's an idiot, yeah. Genius of Grand Admiral Thrawn and his supernatural minions. It's a race to save one of the last Jedis, as one of the last Jedis is hunted by the last remnants of the Jedis. God, that's hilarious. Oh, man. I'm crying over it. Oh, this is funny. The last Jedi who's been, what was that? Something like looked for by another last Jedi by the remnants of the last Jedi. And yes, he, I mean, clearly this person is spoofing on the fact that, you know, all the 66 wiped out all the Jedi, but apparently not, according to Disney. <laughs> oh, God, this is good. They must learn to put aside their differences, reconcile with their pasts, and risk it all to find a long-lost ally who may or may not be able to help them. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Look for a long-lost ally that may or may not be able to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely spot on, because at no point is it actually confirmed that he will help. In fact, actually, he comes across quite useless, actually, to be fair. But hope always remains in Ahsoka. It's terrible, doesn't it? She, she acts like she's 20 years older than she is. So, yeah, that's that. So, yeah, <laughs> so that's the trailer, the 80s trailer. I mean, as you can see, oh, it's funny as hell. It's really good. Uh, and, and you can tell there, like, obviously by my face, you know, it's, it's really funny. And it, it's basically pointing out all of the problems with this show. Like, all the things that you sit there, when you watch this, if you're like me, you're going to sit there and watch this show and you're going to be like, there's a lot of problems with this. And then you watch this 80s trailer and he's literally nailed it all on the head. But he's done it in a funny way and he's done it in the style of an 80s trailer. I mean, even the aspect ratio is 80s. Uh, really well done, really well done. Um, like I say, if you get a chance, go over, check this channel out, give it a like. I will I'll put it in the description down below. Give it a watch, give it a like. It, it's really good. And, and it's really made my day. I've, I've been feeling really rough now for the last week, but this really did put a smile on my face. Uh, absolutely fantastic, really good. So anyway, until next time, take care, stay safe, nerdy geezer out.